Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and welcome back to my studio. Today I'll be showing you how I painted this really loose watercolour winter scene with distant mountains and tall elegant trees sort of on the edge of a snowy riverbank. It's inspired by this photograph that I found on Pixabay and this is a river in Belgium. I shall leave um, a link to the photograph in the description below in case you're interested in taking a look. So I'm going to first of all just sketch the scene out in time lapse onto my page and keeping it really really simple just putting in the river bank and just roughly positioning the trees and the shape of the mountain in the background. It's this simplification that's key when you're painting loosely to start with. Try and just look at it in terms of these large important shapes and features. That's all we need to give us a roadmap to start painting. Today I'm using Milford cold pressed watercolour paper. It's 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38. It's not pre-stretched, it will buckle a bit as I paint, but then as it dries naturally, it will flatten out. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape, and my board's at an angle of about 20 to 30 degrees, so that gravity will help with the painting. I'm going to paint the first part wet in wet, so that means wetting the page all over down as far as the um, river bank and the horizon line, um, and leaving the snowy riverbank area dry. So I get a nice hard edge to my wash across there and then wetting the river itself. I'm using my one and a half inch Princeton Aqua Elite synthetic mottler, but use any large wash brush for this. I'm going to then mix up varying mixtures of my limited palette, which will consist of paint gray with some indigo. There'll also be some raw sienna, burnt sienna and sepia. I want to start off with grey and just get a very flat plain graduated wash for my sky so I'm mixing up a sort of mid value grey with Payne's grey using a touch of burnt sienna and raw sienna in it as well. Horizontal brush strokes will keep that wash nice and evenly graduated and sort of darker at the top and paler when it comes down behind the mountain and then the mid-ground trees. I shall then mix up a richer mix of Payne's Grey, Raw Sienna, Burnt Sienna, Sepia and Indigo. Um, I'm not mixing that up into a clean single colour. I've got it on my palette so that it's got differing amounts of each in it. And then I'm just dipping into it randomly and pulling up the shape of my mountains and my trees, trying to get some variety to the colour, but without it being too overt. My large brush strokes are really helping to keep this nice and loose. If I can give you any advice about loose watercolour painting, it really is to use the largest brush you can get away with for the area that you want to paint and also to really practice your skills at controlling the water on your page, in your paint mixtures and of course in your brush. So I hope you can see the variety of my different colours here is starting to build up some differentiation between the mountain across the back and the mid-ground trees. So a nice graduated wash creates the water. So starting off with the horizontal brush strokes with this lovely grey colour, dragging it across 
the water and darkening it across the front. And then adding some slightly warmer browns, adding to our colour a bit more raw sienna and burnt sienna. And that will just emphasise these mid-ground trees and pull them out in front of the mountain and the distant trees. You can see that I'm mostly using vertical brush strokes for my tree suggestions. And now I'm just using the corner of the brush um, and where the wash is drying, um, I'm able to get slightly harder marks and that just will give me a nice impression of the tree shape on the left. Then just dragging a little bit of um, light value gray across the snow in places just for a few shadows. And then just before things dry, um, as an optional extra, you can drag a palette knife or the corner of a plastic store card or the end of a paintbrush through the damp paint to create these um, scraped back trees and branches across the tree line. If you don't like to do this, then you don't have to, but it's best to wait until your wash is dry and then you can paint in all of your trunks and branches um, wet onto the dry painting using a rigger brush. But it's part of my sort of characteristic style to um, etch in these kinds of marks at the wet in wet stage. I really enjoy this process, but of course it's entirely optional. And now it's time to leave this to dry completely. So here's the first stage and it's dried really nicely. And I'm going to continue to paint it now, this time using the wet on dry technique. And that involves using wet paint onto the dry painting and it will give me these harder, crisper edges so I can bring this loose, all these loose washes together with a little bit of crisp detail. And that's mostly going to involve using a rigger brush or a lining brush to paint in some stronger tree trunks and tree branches across the mid-ground trees and some of the ones that are slightly further forward and slightly further back. And now using the side of the rigger brush to drag some tone across the base of the riverbank. and continuing to bring that dark tone round towards the foreground and dragging a little bit of it across the snow itself, maybe getting some dry brush marks here and there. This is just a bit of something and nothing, just to help to build up a little bit of suggested detail in the foreground.
I'm going to call that done now. Um, there's always a risk of overworking a loose painting if we put too much into it. So I always try to stop just before I think it's finished um, so that that stops me from fiddling and fussing and adding too much detail. I already think that I've added a, a few too many sort of trees and branches in this. I could have left a lot more to the imagination, but I really enjoyed painting it. I think this is my favourite type of loose watercolour painting um, where it's the looseness and freshness of the washes that creates the illusion of the scene that we want to paint. So I hope you enjoyed watching me paint that. I really enjoyed painting it. Let me know what you think in the comments and please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to support the channel, then um, you can do so via the super thanks button below or by supporting Morgana or myself on Patreon. Many thanks to everyone that already supports us. We really do appreciate you. And I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.